Okay guys, how we doing? Uh, I'm going to review Kennedy class one, two, three, and four of our design worksheet booklet. In the classroom, we've done uh, Kennedy class one. Unfortunately, the second class had like a split screen from the Microsoft stream. So I just wanna go over these uh, and then there'll be uh, four consequential videos of one, two, three, four. So this is a review again. We're gonna start with the lower. Uh, this looks like our first project of Dent 1159, excuse me, Dent 1159, correct, from last semester. And this was our Kennedy class one lower mandibular. First step I would do is outline the edentulous areas of number five and six and seven with the mesh retention going as far as distal as the first molar six on each side, even though the acrylic will cover the retromolar pads up into the attached and detached mucosa of the third and fourth quadrant. So this would be step one. Step two is identify the direct retainers. And we know the direct retainers are the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area, which would be three, four, and four, four. And we're gonna clasp with the stress breaking clasp of R, P, I, Y, or G with the mesiocusal rest as not to have the uh, terminal abutment drift into the edentulous space of the third and fourth quadrant. So the mesocusal rest, uh, for simplicity's sakes, I will put the G clasp. On the three, four and four, four. Step three would be indirect retention and auxiliary rests. So we know that the fulcrum line is this line drawn through the two most distal rests. And perpendicular to the midpoint of that line would be the indirect retention, which would probably be three, one and four, one. But the clinical crown root to ratio is very short on those. So we're going to move over to the canine three, three and four, three. A minimum would be a cingulum rest. We could plate if we wish. Or step four is the major connector, and then we can put up minor connectors to the interproximal channel. And then if you want to color in the major connector here of the lingual bar, you can. This looks very familiar to our first project. Now, if this is not an end of, this would be a, a bare minimum of academic correct illustration of the Kennedy class one lower. Uh, if we wish to have more indirect retention, obviously you could have Kennedy bar, you could apron the anterior, we can have uh, altered cast with double mesh spacer for the third and fourth quadrant. This would all be extra. As well as on the buckle of three, four and four, four, you could go with the roach clasp, you could go with the eye bar, any of these three is the only choice for the class one. Now, when you're in your work placement or in the, in the workforce, uh, you'll see all kinds of creative embrasure clasps and J clasps. Uh, that's fine. But here at the school, as long as you know what the academic baseline is, then we can go from there. Get some lighting here. So we'll move on to the maxillary. And the same four steps apply. Outline the edentulous area. Mesiocles arrest on the direct retainers of 1, 5, and 2, 5 in this situation. Step three is indirect retention, probably the canines. Uh, we'll use G clasp again on the 1, 5, and 2, 5. And step four, connect the dots, or major connector, I should say. I shouldn't say connect the dots. So, indirect retention on one, three, and two, three. Again, we have to have a full palette or 
a closed oval, anterior posterior paddle strap, a skeletal design. And this would be the bare minimum. Once again, if you wanted more indirect retention, you could do the full palate. We could apron the anterior teeth, etc. So we'll move on to drawing number three. Uh, we'll stay with the maxillary here. Again, this is all Kennedy class one. Outline the edentulous area five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven on the other side. And once you repeat yourself doing these illustrations and drawings, you'll be able to better understand at least the basic principles of design and reinforce the academic principles of design, whether you deviate from those is secondary in the marketplace, but at least here you need the baseline. Again, um, direct retainers is step two, the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area. To switch it up, we'll use the roach clasps, maybe from a visual standpoint. And again, we need some indirect retention Maybe we'll add the single limb rest here. Step four, major connector. Uh, whether this is a window, whether this is a plating, that's secondary. Whether this is a full palette or a closed oval, anterior posterior palate strap, doesn't matter. But this would be your baseline. If you want to plate all of these with this Kennedy bar at the anterior or fill out the whole full palette or mesh strengthener with acrylic, that's secondary as well. But this is just the basic to practice. Outline the dents of this area on drawing number four. This is the lower, class one. Don't forget the tissue stops, supporting the free end carriage on the midline of the ridge. Step two is direct retainers. These are reciprocations of some sort. And we can use eye bars, roach clasp, or G clasp. We could use the rut wire clasp. And the rot wire clasp could be stainless steel, uh, platinum gold palladium, or tyconium. Um, any of those choices. Or the cast clasp, which is the first choice, which I've drawn here. I'll put that at the top. Or cast. Again, this step four is the major connector. Now, step three was the auxiliary rest indirect retention. Possibly, maybe we should have done a Kennedy bar, or if you want to plate the whole anterior for indirect retention, that's fine too. Now, depending on how much indirect retention you'll need is depending on the length of the free end saddle between four and five and retromolar pad. The longer the lever, the more lift, the more load. The longer the lever, the more indirect retention. Again, fulcrum line drawn through the two most distal rest, class one. Now we're gonna enter some modifications in our class one, which you'll have to understand the secondary rules of design for class one. Once we have a modification, we need to uh, put a rest adjacent to that modification of that guide plane. So you have guide plane distal of three, two, two, and three. Now, whether the anterior is a mesh and post, whether it's a high metal backing, the choice is yours. Again, step one is outline the edentulous areas. Step two, direct retainers. In this case, it would be on the teeth adjacent to the posterior edentulous area, which is three and three. Modification anterior auxiliary rest, step three. And then you can connect the dots, step four again with the full palette or closed oval for the class one. This is acting as an indirect retainer in the posterior section. If this is not, uh, if you want to don't want to leave these windows open, I guess you could plate lateral and canine. You could plate lateral and canine as such. Probably uh, more prudent to do so. Now, with only four remaining teeth, if the prognosis is poor and you still want the cast option, I guess you could do the mesh major connector with acrylic major connector of the full palette uh, with cast clasps on either side, whether they be rot wire, tyconium, platinum, cold, palladium, or stainless steel. So here we're introducing the modification rule of an anterior modification where we need a rest adjacent to each side. We can move on to drawing number six 
We're going to replace tooth number seven here on the lower. And we're going to replace tooth number five and six on the fourth quadrant. Tooth number seven in the seventh and the third quadrant. And whether this is a post with the metal denture base, or is it a mesh and post, depending on the vertical dimension, the height of the prosthetic tooth, many factors uh, of how you're going to retain this tooth here. Obviously, if it's an immediate extraction of 3-4, I would probably lend itself to the mesh retention so we can have some more reliability of this uh, single tooth. So, mesocles will rest on the terminal abutments. We'll use G-clasp, uh, the simplest form, on tooth number 3645. Modification needs a rest on both sides. We've got guide plane one, two, three, four guide planes. We need a rest to close off these guide planes on both sides. Step four, connect the dots, whether that's a single rest or not. Choice is up to us. Whether we want to have some symmetry of this uh, indirect retention here, maybe we'll plate both canines for some symmetry. Now, these designs should become organically when we go digital uh, partial dentures to design. Uh, obviously, uh, the clasps are indicative of where the undercuts are. Or if it's a diagnostic cast, then we can ask the DDS practitioner to prepare the teeth as such for optimum design and undercut and rest preparations in vertical dimension. If I go on to drawing number seven now, Outline the dentures area, step one. Whether these anterior laterals will be uh, metal linguals, mesh and posts, we don't know yet. Again, what's going to determine that is the vertical dimension of occlusion in the bite, how we're going to adhere. Well, you know, just to keep it uh, something different, let's use some metal backings of these laterals because if you've got heavy overclosure, there's going to be some metal bond and some beads in the anterior to retain the veneer of prosthetic laterals. Again, here, maybe we'll do a metal denture base. Obviously, we don't have live models. And at the back, we'll do the mesh retention. So here we got three different types of uh, prosthetic tooth retention. We got metal linguals, we got metal denture base with a post, and we got the mesh acrylic denture base here in the second quadrant. This is a now a freestanding pier abutment in the free end. And this is an additional rule to our design. If we have a free end tooth in the free, uh, a freestanding tooth in the free end section of the Kennedy class, we're going to omit it and create the next terminal abutment as my primary abutment, the canine. So we will omit number five with two guide planes. And that's it. No rest, no clasp. Now, in the marketplace, they may choose to clasp this because of visual distraction of this clasp, aesthetically, of the 2-3. Again, on this side, in the marketplace, probably an embrasure clasp 5 and 6. Academically, for lack of rotation, if we put one clasp anterior as possible, one as posterior as possible in the dentate side, then you will have more stability moving that rest preparation apart. Moving that rest preparation apart. We will have to move these clasps apart. Uh, again, anterior modification, a rest on either side. You can see mesial, distal, distal, mesial of three as a minimum. Now we have a clasp over here, so let's just plate this. We'll plate this. You can plate them all if you wish. Let's connect our major connector here. We'll come down around the inside of the pillar. And our closed oval here. So we'll plate these three, these two, a window around the lone standing bicuspid five, minor connector seven, and there we have it. So what's the rule here? When we have a pier abutment or freestanding bicuspid in the free end in a Kennedy class one or two or the free end omit. Now, this may go completely juxtaposed to the marketplace where they'll choose to clasp such an item. This side in the marketplace, they'll probably do embrasure clasp. And then we've just opened this up for more stability for uh, 
less rotation of the free end and maybe saving this bicuspid a little longer. Always say if I was a gambling person, this is probably the next tooth to go and then probably the two centrals. Hopefully not the canine and then we become kind of hemisection edentulous, which would be really difficult, difficult design where we need to clasp as much as we can here, probably just prior to full mouth extractions. So the last drawing for Kennedy class one, and I'm sorry if it's a little bit brief, but we've gone over this in the classroom and I'll slow down for class two and three and four since we didn't do that in the classroom as of yet. And then you can follow along, but most of you have these already illustrated in your workbooks. And I just want to go over it for the second group. Most likely that was getting a, a smattering of it through the split screen. Uh, video. So outline the edentulous area. Clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area in the posterior region with the simplest direct retainer for class one or two, which is our stress breaking clasps of RPI, Y, and G. If you're going to do attachments of extra coronal attachments on crowns or vario snap or ball attachments, uh, I mean, obviously those are all for class one when there is uh, resilience for rotation. Now, in the anterior section, we have a modification. We need to clasp as a minimum adjacent to that to close off the guide planes here. One, two, three, four guide planes. You have to close those off. Now, step four, major connector, major connector, major connector. Cut the dots, uh, connect the dots for class four. Okay. And then we can color it in if you wish the lingual bar for Kennedy class one. But what's important is that you have a guide plane closed off with mesial guide planes of three and three with a minimum of a mesial uh, lingual rest. If you wish to have more indirect retention on this class one, you could do cingulum rest. You could plate the canines. You can plate all the remaining five teeth. You could also do an intermediate. I'll do a little bit darker an intermediate or let's K let's call this segmented lingual bar where we have two lingual bars or two major connectors left and right, minimizing the amount of food entrapment under the lingual freedom of the lower mandibular due to the spacing of the mesh retention here in the anterior. If you wanted to put posts on this anterior section due to the vertical dimension or the ridge mesial uh, excuse me, labial lingual width of the uh, ridge from atrophy, then we could put the posts as well. I mean, these are all addendums to the original design or additionals, uh, but still I started with the basic rules of design and then we can additionally move forward and add on depending on the case scenarios. The case scenarios are centric occlusion, vertical dimension, shade, which means aesthetics, uh, patient compliance and expectations, right? patient expectations. Do they have a previous appliance? Is, there their, is this their first appliance? Uh, opposing dentition, is it a prosthetic? Is it a full prosthetic, a partial prosthetic, acrylic, temporary, transitional, implant supported? All these will be the treatment plan, centric occlusion, vertical dimension, aesthetics, patient's expectations, the opposing dentition, as well as maybe the last one or the first one. The last one for us would be the dollar sign. And I think the patient may put the dollar sign to the top, depending on what they can afford is what they want. And maybe that's how they ended up in this situation, not to be too judgmental. So I leave you briefly, very quickly in 20 minutes, the Kennedy class one design worksheet. Uh, look for designs, Kennedy class two, three, and four, and then we will have those done online. Uh, and then you can view those at your own pace and then um, if you have any questions, please bring them to me either virtually, electronically, or personally. Okay, thank you.